Hello, I'm Kate Rushworth and I'm a YouTube strategist. Well, I think the three main things that work for news on YouTube, how people work when they're looking for news on YouTube, people share YouTube videos, they search for them, and also they, really crucially, they subscribe to YouTube channels and find videos that way as well. So I think for, for news, the one thing that people have to have in their mind is that when people are searching for something, they're looking for a news story, it's normally just happened, the news is breaking. So the faster you can get the videos online, you're more likely to get that um, a whole tidal wave of people searching for that video. So if you are doing, you're covering a breaking news story, speed is all, always paramount. But there's something else as well. When people um, are sharing or they're, they're searching for other things, you should always consider not just the breaking news, but also the context behind news stories as well. So I like to think of YouTube as, as the person who kind of, you know when you're sat in a room and you, you don't really know the, you really want to ask a question, but you don't want to look stupid. And then someone will put their hand up and say like, oh, you know, this might be a stupid question, but dot, dot, dot. I feel like YouTube does that service. So for example, um, like when Ariel Sharon died recently, the, the, the videos that said like, who, who is Ariel Sharon? Who was he? Did particularly well because there are a lot of people who don't know who he is and wanted to have that context. And if you provide that context and that background, you have these videos that can also work very well, even if you didn't necessarily give the breaking news to it. The tips I give, which you can find in the YouTube playbook, are often very applicable to, to any genre. But I think news in particular, there's one thing that I often say to, to people when they ask me, like, how do I succeed on YouTube? It's often the simplest things that people overlook. So if you think about what you have to market yourself on YouTube, you generally have a thumbnail and a title that work together. This has to be where a lot, a huge amount of your um, efforts and um, curation should go because that's like a mini marketing poster for your video and how the title works with the thumbnail so they can tell a story together can often be the huge, just a real cause of success on YouTube because it's enticing and people want to click on it. So when you're thinking about creating a video, yes, the content is obviously 100% the thing that you should be thinking about, but you need to make sure that, oh, I finished my video, I'll go and upload it, and then the thumbnail and the title are afterthoughts. I don't want you to think like that. That has to be a key paramount, a paramount importance in your mind. On YouTube, I think news works in a really wonderful, new, unique way. And I think that the key thing here is the conversation that you can have with your audience. So often personalities can work very well. So just thinking to mind, uh, channels like the Young Turks or SourceFed, we have very strong personalities who deliver the news and you go because you have a relationship with them. But also channels that have a very strong editorial voice so, for example, channels like Truthloader or Russia Today, although they, some don't necessarily have a presenter, uh, for example, Vice, they have a um, very strong editorial voice, so you know what that channel will deliver. So they, that's how you can cut above other YouTube channels, is that people understand what it is you will get from your YouTube channel. So if you're very clear about what it is you offer, either through your editorial content or through your personalities and your presenters, that can be how you can stand out. Well, first of all, before I answer that, I wanted just to point out that YouTube is completely non-exclusive as a platform, so you're welcome to upload the content to Vimeo or any other um, video service. Um, but YouTube is a huge, huge video destination. If you consider that 7,000 hours have been uploaded every day of news content, uh, a lot of people are sharing and searching for news footage on YouTube. It's a platform that people understand. There are a number of ways that you can advertise your TV and other content offerings that you have. I think the best way to do it on YouTube is to make it very clear that what you offer on different platforms is value added, so it's something else. I feel that there are, there are many YouTube channels that are just promoting the fact that you have a TV or radio service. So YouTube channels work best when the content is for YouTube and it is very clear. But then in the content that you offer and in your channel design and in your metadata, that's where you can also communicate that you have these other platforms that are worth visiting. But I think what is very what's very useful is if you make if you make clear this is what you can get on YouTube, but if you go here, this is something else that you can get well, which will also be of really good value for you as well.
Oh, the eternal question, how long should a video be on YouTube? Um, I think a video should be as long as it needs to be. You shouldn't ever make it artificially shorter or longer just because you feel like you're serving the needs of the platform. We have news channels that have very long, you know, 20, 30 minute documentaries that still perform very well. But there's some things to be mindful of. So the first thing is that watch time is a huge driver of placement of search and suggested video on the site. So that what watch time means is how long people are watching videos for. So like the incremental minutes watched. So you want people to watch a lot of content on your channel and continue watching it on the platform as well. So what you need to think about is how do you keep the viewer entertained? Generally, the answer to that is making fantastic videos, which I have no doubt that the BBC can do. Um, but what I should also think you should be mindful of is that this isn't watching television. So people are constantly distracted. People are constantly distracted. Imagine that when someone is watching your video, they have five tabs open and they're on social media and they can click off you at any time. So you need to always make sure you've got their attention. Something I'd want to draw your attention to in YouTube analytics is the audience retention graph, where you can see exactly where your viewers leave a video. So if you're mindful of the analytics of that, then you can develop your content to have um, a content offering that's much more compelling. YouTube captions are a fantastic way to make your videos more accessible. So to people who are deaf and hard of hearing, and also for people who speak a different language. Uh, so you, there are many products. What I would just recommend to, to keep on top of this is check out the Reaching All Audiences section of the playbook, where we go through products like Transcribe and Sync, uh, and the ability to upload different caption files in any language. This can really help broaden your audience beyond the territory that you're delivering the content to.